Becoming sustainably human at work isn't a small undertaking. It often means letting go of systems and behaviors that don't serve us individually or collectively. So what do we do as individuals, as groups of folks, as leaders? How do we carve out space for our humanity while making sure we're not the only ones? How do we thrive in the workplace while not imagining we have to be superhuman? How do we cultivate spaces that are generative and healing, creative and extraordinary? I don't have the answers to those questions. And to be fair, I don't believe one human can ever have all the answers to those questions. I'm working through them every day. This podcast is an invitation, an invitation for you to join me on my quest. I've asked my teachers to share their wisdom with you, and here we are. This is Sustainably Human at Work, and I'm Liz Wiltsey. I'm so excited to welcome Toy Marie, as she's been a teacher of mine for a long time. So thank you for being here. Oh, that means a lot, Liz. Thank you. Thank you for asking me and having me. Yeah. So Toy, you run a community called Business for the People, and so I'd love to just talk about what it means to be kind of sustainable in a capitalist universe (laughs) and what you've seen kind of in your travels trying to Mm. both run your business and support others doing the same. I want to say, I don't know if it's, if we're able to be sustainable in capitalism, right? So they sell us this notion that we can, it's sustainable for us. It's sustainable for the environment. It's sustainable for all parties. And it's really not. And we see that now that through the pandemic for those who had maybe not been studying any of this or really looking or choosing to look at this, the pandemic has opened the eyes of so many people to be like, wait, what have we been participating in? What have we been sold as sustainable, but really is eroding us, our world, our connections, our relationships and all the things. So, I don't think, you know, capitalism is sustainable, but I think what we can do is once we have our eyes open now, so, you know, we see the things, we can't unsee them, right? So we have to grapple with what that means. And for me in my work, it means that we tell the truth and then we try to move a different way. So it it essentially means being curious And it means being open to not having the answers and trying to remember a different kind of way of existing in our bodies, with the land, with our relationships, and of course, at work. I think one of the things is, you know, right now, if you look online, social media, even a lot of our conversations, business and capitalism and like wealth, these conversations are just everywhere. Like it is the conversation. Like that's all people really talk about is how do you build a business? Are you an entrepreneur? Do you need to make millions? Like capitalism has essentially infiltrated our language. And so if it's in our language so much, then it becomes the norm because we're talking We talk like business, even when it's not like in our relationships, we talk like business. And so in my work, even in like business for the people in that space, what we try to do is bring the humanity back to everything. Like what is at the root of us desiring to have this kind of offering or have this kind of work or this kind of business? What is it really trying to sustain or build? Is it, are we building something because we financially need to be taken care of? Or is it in comparison to what we've been sold as what we need to do, right? So have we been marketed to so much that we think we desire millions when we really don't? And so we uncover and look at these questions and then look at what's that intersection and then how do we create and be from that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that that I try to make sure we talk about is like if someone comes to you and says, Toy, like 
<laughs> capitalism just feels so big. Like it all feels so big. <laughs> what are the first, and I know you said, you know, we talk about, we tell the truth, try to move, yeah. get curious. Like if someone were in there, just a regular life in their workplace, what would you say to them in terms of here's a little thing you can do, like <laughs> start doing that's just a little bit different. It's such an amazing question. And I've actually been like thinking about this a lot because when you think about or hear capitalism, people are like, what does that word even mean? Especially now because so many people are talking about it. But if you really are like average person who isn't teaching about this or needing to learn about it and you just are trying to live, you're like, what does that, it means nothing to me. But what I like to say is capitalism is more than an economic system, right? So people just like think that they don't need to know about it because it's something you learn in college and maybe you read a book about it, but essentially capitalism is a practice. We practice capitalism every day and everywhere in our bodies, in our relationships and all of the things. So I like to remind people that it's beyond an economic system. And so if you stop looking at it that way, and start to look at it as a spell that we're under. And I want to credit my friend Jen Lemon for always going back to reminding me that capitalism is a spell, that we've been indoctrinated, assimilated, conditioned to believe as a way to being. And so I always suggest people to just be curious about where, what are your capitalist practices that maybe are in your world right now? Like, how do we navigate relationships? Are we only dating someone because they have money, right? Are we only taking jobs because they're gonna give us a level of success and then get us a class status and that falls into capitalism, right? How are we showing up in our families, in our relationships? Like all of these things play into capitalism. It feels like so often we're told that if we don't have the answer, there's something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. And so that like that curiosity mm -hmm. is something that we have to build access to. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. What helps you? I mean, cause in your teach, when you teach, you're like, I am a perpetual learner. Mm -hmm. I am constantly learning these things. How do you kind of stay in that mind space? Mm. I think because I have seen the benefits of what learning and like excavation have done for me, not just like in my mind, but like tangibly in my relationships, like my relationship with myself, with my body, with my, you know, how I mother. So I'm curious to like interrogate really what I've been taught to believe as true. And I think if we think about critical thinkers of like, not just taking things for face value, but really being like, do I believe that thing? Does that really resonate? And is that true for me? I think a lot of times, you know, we grow up a certain kind of way in a family, in a location. So family, religion, our culture really has us believe one thing. And if you and start to interrogate that, sometimes you can feel like, oh, damn, I'm going to lose everything because my worldview is going to shift. And that, that can be scary. And I will say that there's a level of severance that happens, that has to happen when you start unlearning so much of these things, right? Because you just start doing life differently. You start believing things differently. And so for me, the learning has really helped me to be more embodied and to withstand when there is certain severances that have to, or have had to happen. Like it's not easy and there is grief there. I think that's some things that we don't see. Like if you're scrolling on social media around, like you need to change your thoughts and believe these things. And that's hard, right? If that means you're gonna lose family, if that means you're gonna lose friends, you can't go to that place anymore. Like that is a whole like, identity shift and so because I've been doing this for so long like just really unpacking like what it means to be me what it means to be in my intersections in this world 
Like I can, I have a capacity for it, but honestly, you have to build up a capacity. Mm-hmm. And that's what the learning has been for me to like read these books and then be in conversation with like my beloveds and be like, okay, all right, this is a new thought for me. Are you still going to love me and be with me? And I think find being able to find people who say yes to that, who are maybe on the same journey has been helpful. Mm-hmm. I have said to people that it really only takes one person mm-hmm. to reflect back to you that like, they'll still love you if yeah. you go in a space. Mm-hmm. Like we think it's like 15 <laughs> and it's not. It's not. No. No, because who has time to have 15 deep relationships? Oh, no, <laughs> no, we're talking too much. Can't do it. <laughs> well, and you and I were talking a little bit about the liberatory imagination. Yeah. Um, do you want to say more about kind of how that factors in? Yeah, I want to um, credit Sonia Renee Taylor because I heard her say this on an IG live that she did a couple weeks ago around things like capitalism, like specifically capitalism, we think it doesn't have a root or a beginning. We think that it's just existed and this is the way it's always been. This is why history becomes hella important because we can look back and track like when things pivoted and when things shifted into this mode of being. And so if we don't have the root, we're like, there's no other way. We can't see another way. But if we can look back and be like, what were they doing? How did they exist before this? Now, was it perfect? No. And I don't like, I think that's the tricky part, like not romanticizing how it was before, but looking back and being like, okay, this was the journey. What here can we pull and take with us on this journey of like liberatory imagination? And when I'm speaking about that. I mean, how do we really get free? What is it like? Because we're really in a war for our minds and our imagination and our consciousness. Like what we believe is really important. So being able to imagine and be curious is how we birth new worlds. And then having people to be like, you want to try this thing with me? You want to like, see if we can do it and collaborate. And then, okay, this can be a small space of where we're seeing it possible. And then we can move out and maybe invite more people in. And essentially that's what Business for the People is. It was, it's a space for me to welcome in people who are like questioning and being like, all right, what's here, what's possible, let's explore. So it's all about exploration and like kids, if like, you know, I have four boys, my sons are still really curious and because they're not so much indoctrinated into capitalism, they're not working, they're not doing any of those things. We lose that. And so I think it's a reclamation that we have to get to, to be curious and imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my last question for you is what are you grappling with? Oh, so many things. I think one of the real big things that I've been speaking to beloveds about is love inside of these systems and what it looks like when you have certain values, when you have certain perspectives, what does that mean in our love relationships and our intimacy and how much do we hold to our values when someone has different values than us? Are they completely different? from the perspectives that we have, are we able to still be in love with them and love them deeply and have intimacy? Or are we being hypocritical? And how much of that do we need to hold and navigate? I think because there's such binary thinking, like I'm pushing against that and trying to be like, what does it look like to be in love and in relationships? Knowing with my eyes wide open and knowing so much of these systems, like what's possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Toy, Mm -hmm. thank you so much for being with me. I appreciate it so much. Mm, Thank you for having me. That was amazing. (laughs) Full show notes for this and every episode are available at futureproofskillslab.com slash podcast. 
You'll find a transcript there, as well as links to everything we talked about, plus links to all the ways to connect with Toy Marie. In this episode, you heard Toy talk about the idea of the spell of capitalism. You can find information about the year-long container she holds with Jen Lemon at spellofcapitalism.com. I've mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. Toy's regular newsletter is one of the few emails I make sure to read. You can find that link in the show notes. Thanks for listening.